back. Hope you guys enjoyed your break. We are going to be going over some really fun stuff, the financial end of thing, financial side of things when it comes to scaling your campaigns. Um, a couple things before we get started. Um, just a reminder that this is being recorded, so if you missed any of it, um, please check out the recording and also post your questions to our Elite Commons Facebook group. Um, and we have a follow-up call this coming Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. So let's go ahead and get started. And awesome. I'm just going to throw it on back over here. Awesome. Thank you. So now that you guys have gone through um, a lot of the, um, the actual designing part, so we talked about the growth curves, we talked about uh, scaling based off of cash flows. So those two elements are so valuable uh, in the overall way that you look at your business. And for me, the first time I learned them is super, you know, kind of a mindset shift. And hopefully uh, you guys had the same. And so next, this is a super valuable tool on technicals um, of how to look at the numbers in your business. Okay. And this is defining success when it comes to the metrics and financial modeling. And so the question is, what do you want? And this is such a hard question. And the real question is, what do you really want? Because when you get the what do you want question, you give the stuff that you kind of tell your friends or just over uh, a drink or a dinner. But the reality is after that, there's something that you want that's more deeper. And the way that this comes out is in different metrics in your business. And this is the, the real um, challenge here and the real uh, activity of how do you look at the performance metrics in your business, okay? And we're gonna go through how to plan this stuff because the clearer you are on what you want, what growth curve you want, what, how do you wanna grow based off of cash flow, you can plan all this stuff before you spend a single dollar in Facebook ads. If you look at everything we're doing, we're on number seven, we have one more which is just reviewing the three decisions. We haven't really talked about anything inside of Facebook ads, nothing. But this dictates everything that you're gonna do in the platform, okay? so. I hope now that you can see from the time that we started to now uh, where we are in the workshop, you can see kind of how all of it is coming together for the uh, way that you're making decisions. So there are different financial modeling tools in here for you based off of the business models. There's a lot of different ways to do this. We're doing this so that you have a foundation. And then again, I want you to copy, make a copy of these documents and make them your own, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change a little bit of the type of business model that we're gonna choose and we're gonna go to webinar auto sale. So if you're following along, um, go to number seven in the Excel sheet and you'll see financial modeling and you'll see a bunch of these links, click on the auto sale, okay? This is really nerdy stuff. So if hopefully, if you love numbers, this is um, an incredible tool to play with these numbers. If you're scared of numbers, this is the best tool that's gonna help you overcome your fear. So um, this is meant to be, again, I can give you all of this information at such a fast pace. Instead, if you look at how I'm delivering this to you, it's purposefully bite-sized so you can look at, like we were just talking, Rob and I, we're looking at I'm not a numbers person. And so, well, the way that we've delivered all these metrics, we've actually talked about a lot of numbers. A lot of them. We've looked at where you are now. We've talked about your CPA and your Facebook numbers and what's actually going on inside of them with your ads manager. Then we've talked about your revenue numbers. Then we're talking about growth curves. Then we're talking about profitability. Now we're talking about financial modeling. And so this should actually be multiple workshops, but on purpose we're doing it in a way so you can get the most out of it and be able to do it sequentially. Okay, so this is the next step of the sequence. So. This is called financial modeling. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but it's basically forecasting and playing with projections, okay? If you already have a live campaign, this is for you because you'll see a bunch of ratios and metrics examples. If you don't have a live campaign, there's some examples, but at the end of the day, you have to run your campaign and you'll have a better idea of what reality is. And if you are already running it and you don't know these numbers, get them to the best of your ability so that you're able to fill them uh, as accurately as possible so that the next steps are even more accurate, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. So there are a few different elements here. If you can see for each of the financial models, there is our funnel steps. So funnel steps are a landing page, 
thank you page. I just want to make sure I go back, and this is crystal clear for anyone who's new to webinar marketing. Um, there's something called an evergreen webinar. So a webinar is an online presentation, right? And evergreen means that it's constantly running. It's constantly live. And so the evergreen webinar to an auto sale means that we're automatically selling a course that's $500 to $1,000. Usually this is a higher ticket sale. It's anywhere between $500 on the low end to $2,000. And the purpose is someone's going to come into a webinar, get educated for 45, 60 minutes automatically, and then they're going to go. You'll see the steps. So they see a Facebook ad, they click to the landing page, they enter their information, they go to a thank you page. Once they're there, they go to a webinar room. And that webinar room is that they watch the webinar in, in uh, the presentation. If they stay all the way or if they get all these follow-up messages, eventually they go to a sales page. From the sales page, they go to an order page. And from the order page, there's a confirmation page that they've purchased or upsells, downsells if you have them. Those are the funnel steps. If you've never done a webinar or evergreen campaign, this might sound like a lot of funnel pages and complex uh, elements, but it's not, it's just, if you're doing it, you'll know that this is relatively simple. When you're starting it, you have to just basically model someone so that you can get the foundation. Here's what I want you to do first. This is the simplified version of your metrics, which is you can put in program price. So if it's $1,000, you can put this as ideal CPA, where uh, if you're at $1,000 and you want your profitability to be 200%, you would put that at half of that. So instead of so $1,000 the price, $500 is your CPA target, and an ideal return on ad spend is 200, okay? So what I'll do is I'm gonna go through one as an example with you guys. Um, I wonder if I can do it, oh, I have to sign in. It's all good, I, you, I, I can walk you guys through it and then you can do this. I would choose your business model right now and go back to the other sheet just so you have it open, and then I just want you guys to watch with me first and then you're gonna have the ability to do this yourself, okay? So choose one of these. If your business model or your actual funnel isn't up here, um, just choose one that's close so you can see the funnel steps and then make a copy. But I want you right now to just watch uh, your screen and watch with me of how I'm going through this. Okay, same thing that we're doing, although you and I with Glenn, like same thing. What I was doing is I was doing this process, right? Um, in a very chicken scratch way, which is what are all your ratios? How do we figure them out? And there's some benchmarks here for webinar stuff. So you enter all of your ratios. And the reason we're doing that is so we can go to the next step, but this is an expanded version depending on how you're doing it for your CPA. If your program is this, this is what your refund rates are, this is what your break-even CPA is. So it's a little bit more complicated, but that doesn't matter. That is just there as a reference. This is what matters. This is the thing, again, when it comes to the assessment, if you're already doing this, this is another great tool for an assessment. But what we want to do is put in your numbers, especially if you're currently spending on Facebook uh, and you have a $1,000 budget, right? You can see all of these metrics super clearly. So again, if you're not running a webinar campaign, please follow along because this is important to how you do everything else when it comes to the rest of the financial models, okay? So you'll see the way we have this set up is we have the ad budget. Based off of the ad budget, I can put in, and you can see the, the metrics here based off if they have a ratio or not at the top, um, where you'll see that it just says $2. So you can adjust that. And then you'll see other metrics where it already has a formula, like website clicks. So if you go to B4, you'll see that it already is uh, dividing the ad spend divided by the cost per click. So you'll see it automatically generates. If I have a $3,000 budget, I divide it by two, so I, therefore I have 1,500 clicks, okay? Then the next rate, you input what is my, oops, what is my opt-in rate? And so opt-in rate is when someone comes to the website, how many of those people actually give you their email? So here it might be 20%. So now the opt-in, number of opt-ins or the thank you page views are 300. So again, this is automatically calculated. You don't need to calculate that. Next, how many of those opt-ins and the thank yous actually go to the webinars, the actual webinar presentation room? And so for some businesses, it's 40%. For others, it's as high as 70. And so what is that percentage for you? And you'll see it gets calculated next. From there, how many of those people actually go to the webinar uh, page or the actual sales page? 
And this is a little bit skewed in the webinar game because what happens is that people go via email or they'll, they'll go in different ways not inside of the webinar, but that is a percentage. And again, the next number is calculated. And how many of those people who go to the sales page, go to the order page, next number is calculated. And then from the people who go to the order page, actually buy. So it sounds like a lot of numbers, but you're just putting in some of these ratios. And if you don't know these ratios, that's fine. You can estimate them in the section uh, prior, which is that there are a variety of, or a bunch of different ratios, and you can see the uh, averages or uh, some of the benchmarks that we have for some of those ratios based off of campaigns that we've ran. Okay. So based off of all of those numbers, if you were to manually calculate that each time, it gets complicated. And like, if, especially if you're not a numbers person, it's just too much. So instead, you have this automatically calculated and you put in what is a client worth. So if in this case we're selling a course, that's $1,000, okay? Um, this calculates oddly because it's like a decimals of a customer, but approximately it's $1,400 in value, in revenue. But we spent, um, you have a payment processing stand, um, amount, and we spent $3,000, therefore, in this campaign, this is very important, this is the takeaway, which is based off of everything else that's going on in your business right now, if these are your numbers, if your cost per click is this, and these are individual ratios you have, right now, if you were to run this, you would lose $1,600 every time. And so, it doesn't feel good, that sucks. And so, but if you don't know that, um, it's very hard because you might have a, you might get like uh, helped out because your friend bought a course or like a random sale came in from a random place or there's a referral or whatever happened, you know? Um, but if you look at this, you'll see that these numbers don't look very good. Um, and that's okay because we're gonna turn these numbers around. But if you keep scrolling down, you'll see there's two more types of numbers. One is your bottom line metrics, and these are important because at the end of the day, you can't focus on all numbers. There's just too many numbers in a business, and you have to figure out everything to ignore. That becomes a superpower eventually because you can't track everything and you can't analyze everything. So what you wanna look at is what is my program price in this business model? How much does it cost to get that customer or that client? What is my return on ad spend? And the rest are calculated. And then if you scroll down further, what is my cost per click? Oops, performance metrics. What are my costs per click and costs per each step, right? So what we were talking about where, uh, Glenn, where you had $5 per uh, lead, $25 per call, then discovery call for 125, and then $1,000 CPA, right? And so to calculate that each time for different ratio, for scenarios, it takes time, and you can't do it effortlessly. And you don't wanna calculate these every time. And so if you go down, it also provides the ratios. So what is this? I just gave you guys a templated business dashboard on how to create different scenarios and models for uh, different business models that you have, different funnel types you have, and different adjustments that you're able to make in your business. So you can assess a business with very little work. You're just putting in a few numbers. You can see there's like 30, 40 numbers here or whatever, um, but I actually only need to put in like six or seven. Okay, so you get all of these ratios. That's not the cool part. The cool part is the next slide. Ooh, numbers. <laughs> so what you're able to do here, this is, I think, the, the awesome part, which is, again, it's gonna break a little bit because of if you are adjusting some of these numbers and you're making adjustments to the fundamentals or the base of this financial model, but here's the cool part. All those numbers that we did, Glenn, and I know same thing with you, although of like, okay, well, what if we have another scenario? What you can do now is duplicate this and you can just copy paste to the next two columns. And what you're able to do is what if my cost per click went from $2 to $1.50? What changes? And you don't wanna do all that math. So instead, you can come down here and you can just see bottom line, instead of losing $1,600, I'm able to only lose 1100. Okay, what else can I fix? And so, before we go on to that, you can again see all of the changes in your bottom line. So it's like, I know my cost per client numbers decreased to 1500. My cost per click and all these other ratios, when I decrease my cost per click to $1.50, look at what happens to the rest of my business metrics. That's the cool part when you're planning this stuff. Because as you improve specific parts, different metrics in your business will change anyways. And so 
When you're doing this, the opportunity here isn't just with one, it's with what if I increase or decrease my cost per website click, but also increase my opt-in rate from 20 to 25%. So look at that difference. I increased by 5%, but the difference is from negative 1,000 to 669. And look at the types of changes I'm making. I'm not changing $2 to $1. I'm changing $2 to $1.50. I'm not going from 20% to 40%. I'm making 25 because it's possible. Like it's within my reach. I can try to do that. And then you keep working all the way down. And you'll see that there are a lot of different metrics here uh, and you can see that for all these scenarios and then the last scenario uh, you can also play with of like what if my ad budget now goes from 3,000 to 30,000 what changes or 5,000 or 6,000 whatever that number is and so you can work on all these things and what I want you to do is under start here you'll see just go to file for whichever one you want to use and you should be able to make a copy. I'm just not signed in on this computer. So if you guys have any issues with that at home, uh, let us know in the chat and uh, we'll help take care of it. And um, this is, so you have each one of these for different business models, right? So if you go here, um, there's a lot of people who do Shopify. So if you're in here, you'll see that there is uh, the same explanation. You put in your same base scenario and you can see some of the ones that you can enter. And again, you get all those metrics. And then you go to scenarios, and there are all of these adjustments that you can make. Does that make sense? OK. Awesome. So I wish we had time to go through that. This is what I want you guys to focus on after this workshop, especially for Thursday. Um, if you want to show your financial model, uh, on that call, if you want to share it with me, uh, I would love to go through it because that's the best time to actually walk through some of the real numbers, especially if you have them, so that uh, we could adjust this for you, okay, and, and give you feedback. So there's some of the formatting issues, sorry about that. So you guys can make the copy, as you can see on my screen, complete it, and then um, share it with your team if you uh, have one. Okay, so that is the financial model. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Justina, is there anything? Okay, awesome, great. Um, do you guys have any questions about implementing the financial model? Any questions, no? Okay, awesome, so again, now that you've looked at this, and this is the best time to do this is after you've completed the financial model, um, but you'll see what we went through was, were growth curves, then we went through cash flow based scaling. And so now at the end, hopefully something has changed a little bit, okay, or a lot of how you look at these. I scale my ads when, I decrease my ad spend when, and I uh, pause my ads when. And that is hopefully a little bit different than how you answered it about earlier, like two to four hours ago, um, when you're, or way quicker if you're watching this online. So I would change those after you have this. Now, um, if you have been following along, the next step here, this should be filled out for you guys. So if you go to uh, step number nine on your sheet, if you've been um, putting uh, your answers in the sections where it says fill, uh, fill in the blanks, you should see all of this filled out. So um, here you go. So again, the purpose is that once you complete this worksheet, you can give this to your team uh, and share this with them. This is not a create it once and set and forget document. Now that you've developed this, you'll know when to uh, scale, uh, decrease, or pause. You'll know your growth curve, uh, what, which one you're on, what cash flow you're on, and which one you'd like to be on. And now you know how to make a lot of these decisions in order to move forward. So that is um, the, the way that you know, we can handle this whole process. What I will say, let me just go back here. When it comes to the financial modeling, what we've done now is we've gone through the growth curve, right? We've gone through cash flow. We've gone through financial modeling, which you could complete later. The cr three key decisions, this is the ones that we've already spoken about. And the last thing here is the rhythm for review. And this is the thing where most people drop the ball on and we've struggled with this internally ourselves. Um, and the only way we've gotten around this is actually scheduling it. And so let me explain a couple things. So 
the reason things fall through the crack is because there isn't um, accountability. And accountability, basically, when, when you're not reaching out and following up with your team or people who are responsible for a specific thing, or is, if you're just a, uh, the person managing it yourself, you need some sort of way that people are keeping you accountable or you're creating the environment so people ask you. Um, and so when there's no accountability, it's really hard to have follow through. Uh, unless you're super motivated. But the problem with motivation is you're super motivated and then it goes down, right? And so you need a system to get around that. And so you want to follow up on what matters. And so the excuse is, I'm busy. I have things to do. Um, and I have to run my business. And the thing is, the, the reality is when that's happening, the business ends up running you. And so instead, here's how to fix it. The same thing that we were talking about here. Where do I want to go? How, do, am I, how am I getting there and what will I do to get there? It's very clear now, hopefully, right? Where it's like, I want to beat last quarter's growth. Here's the three to five metrics that are important to me. Are we doing the initiatives? Yes or no. And what will happen is you can set up these meetings for a weekly meeting just to catch up on these three, right? Where do we want to go? How am I getting there? And um, what will I do to get there? And when you're doing these, I was mentioning to a few of you guys when we were talking at one of the breaks, we do these with clients and the calls are, can honestly be 10 to 15 minutes max. The reason is, is because when you're going through the objectives, key results and initiative, it's like, how are we doing on them? Are we at 32 students? Yes or no. And then are we at the 15% uh, registration to show up rate? Yes or no. And when you're going through that, it's just, it's black or white and you're just answering the question. So at that point, the meeting doesn't last very long because usually the conversation is awesome, high five, we're doing amazing, let's keep doing what we're doing, see you next week. Or it is, okay, we're down our, some of our numbers or we, we're flatline on a bunch of our numbers, we don't know what to do. And sometimes what comes out of that is there's actually a work meeting or a strategy meeting or an analysis meeting or there's a lot of, a series of tasks that come out of that. So that's the weekly meeting. Honestly, it could be 15 minutes, but I put 30 minutes from there. At that point, now you're doing a monthly review. And it sounds like super corporate if you're a small business, but what happens is with these rhythms, you're able to schedule these, and it doesn't have to be this long, but you just have them in the calendar. And you've invited the people there, and now you just have to show up. Because instead of, you know, the challenge that we had is we just didn't schedule them out. That's it. And so when we scheduled them and they're in our calendar, we would show up. And then we can at least put together our documents and we would say, oh man, tomorrow's the meeting. Uh, where are we on those numbers? Uh, if, if we've been behind or usually we have a document with a KPI sheet where we have benchmarks along the way, but we're humans, things happen. So the monthly review is more specific on, okay, now we're two months into the quarter. Um, and so if you look at Q4 in terms of the last quarter of the year, you might be end of November and you're like, all right, we're nowhere close to our goal. I actually just got off the phone with uh, my team member uh, and we have been growing one of the companies incredibly fast, very, very fast. And what's going on right now is that we're stuck at $5,000 a day in ad spend and we're trying to get to 7,000 a day in ad spend. Can't do it. Something's going on, our cost per acquisition is too high, our CPA and our, our, our cost per click is too high and uh, it's a challenge. And so, but at the same time, we're behind on uh, the, the benchmark was $8,000 per day, $9,000 per day in revenue. Now that we're behind on that, every day that we don't hit that, the number and the gap increases. And so you can imagine how much more pressure that is on the team. You can Im imagine how much more pressure that is on the client. And so when we're doing that on the monthly review, because we're internally doing daily reviews on those KPIs, by a weekly meeting, which we had one yesterday, the team already knows we're behind by X thousands of dollars per day in revenue, X thousand dollars per day in ad spend. And so it doesn't feel good, so we're already working on it before the meeting comes up because it's so crystal clear, this is how much revenue we want, this is how much ad spend we want, this is how much the return we want. And so the monthly review is like, well, the conversation we're gonna have at the end of this month because we're already halfway in is that we didn't hit this month's metric, what happened? And how do we prevent that? And how do we protect the next quarter? And that's uh, difficult conversations. But because we have a daily, weekly, monthly system that helps, and because from there, if you just schedule this one week before the end of a quarter, you're able to plan this stuff out 
and know that you know at the last Thursday of every quarter or whatever, um, you can plan it out and say, okay, we're gonna look at what happened with our objectives and key results and our initiatives, and were we too ambitious? Or were we actually hit all of them? This, is, has, hap this has happened too, where we basically hit every single one of our key results before the, the quarter is ending, and we're like, we set the numbers way too low. And that feels phenomenal. But then it's also like, all right, let's push, put the next number. We're right now with one of our clients three months ahead of projections. And it feels awesome. Now we're actually, the number we're gonna hit this month, we're actually five months ahead of projection. But because we've been growing so quickly, we feel now we're behind this month, even though we're stuck at $5,000 per day in ad spend. So it never ends. This is a dynamic thing. This is always moving. And you're gonna have different growth curves and different profitability and how you react will keep changing, especially with a platform like Facebook that keeps evolving, right? Um, so that's the quarterly meeting. What I would challenge you to do here is in your calendar, schedule that time, even if it's with yourself, with a weekly meeting, 30 minutes, with yourself. Monthly meeting, just so you have that, again, it doesn't have to be an hour, it could be 30 minutes, and quarterly. It takes five minutes, but if you do that right now, it will help so much in terms of just planning for that, and then once you have that on your calendar, you can figure it out, okay? So please make a note of that and, and make that happen. I've also provided very simple questions on what to ask. These are conversation starters. So I like conversation guides of how to kickstart conversations, and so this is how this works. So it's like, what is the status on our objective? Where, the, where did we wanna go? Then what are the key results? And, and you can see, are we getting there and how do we know? And so we want a 15% registration to show up, right? Where are we? We're at 12 and a half. Okay, well, what are you gonna do to get the other two and a half, right? And then what are the initiatives? Well, I do to get there. Are we doing it? Are any of the initiatives stuck? This happens all the time because life gets in the way, business gets in the way. And it's like, are any of our initiatives just completely ignored? We wanted to launch the webinar funnel, didn't happen. Like why? It's end of second month of the quarter. Something is up, you know? Um, and then any of these initiatives, this is such an important question, which is can we delay, delegate, or delete? And this was really helpful for me because I've noticed that I always take on more than I can handle and then I cancel a bunch of stuff. And then it's the same way we did this presentation that um, we, the presentation was actually twice as long and we cut and then we cut again. And um, it doesn't feel good. But you have that because you want an abundance of ideas, you want an abundance of initiatives, and then you wanna figure out what you can actually execute on. And when you're executing on it, it's like, you know what, that initiative, it's actually not a priority, or this webinar funnel is the thing that's actually working, let me double down on that. I'd rather have less, focus on less to get more, and it's counterintuitive. So that is the, um, a few questions to kickstart those meetings, and they don't have to be uh, crazy deep. So, those are uh, the steps um, for the decision-making framework. And so uh, at this point, I want you guys to give yourself a round of applause for everything you're doing today. Oh. So that is it for the worksheet, and that is it for the presentation. And then uh, we can also do a uh, quick hot seat. All right. Who is your uh, your hot seat guest? Glenn. Glenn All right, Glenn, guest. let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> uh, let me see. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you don't have a laptop. You're good. I do get a seat. <laughs> it's a literal hot seat. It's, <laughs> it's just missing the fire under it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Can you tell us more about what you do? <clears throat> Yes. <laughs> How much do you want to know? So, we, yeah, what is, what is your business and um, like where is it at now? Where do you want to go? Our, our, our business model is uh, we're commercial cleaning, $100 billion a year industry. Nobody knows how much money is actually in this thing. But uh, we are responsible for getting a whole lot of buildings clean. Now, we figured out a long time ago that there's not a whole lot of money in cleaning toilets. So we figured out how to get into the marketing side. So we recruit people who want to build a janitorial business into the business. We sell them training. We work them through the different stages of growing their business, and we do marketing for them. 
So most of the money we generate is in marketing fees for securing contracts. Awesome. I, I love this business model because what you're able to do is he's able to scale without building a team. There's a different team he's building, but that's actually he's getting people to pay him for the right to work with him. It's genius. I love it. Um, so good on you. Um, what is your next milestone in the business or what's, what's the thing that you're focusing on right now? Well, we're focusing on, uh, we're limited by uh, our infrastructure yeah, because we have, once we bring in our contractors, they expect us to grow their business. And so we have to have boots on the ground, salespeople, lead generation, uh, sales training, yeah, you know, all those things that you said, you got to recruit, you got to right. train, you got to onboard, and then you got to manage, and you got to do all that very well. Right. And so we're, uh, over the next year, we're going to double our staff. Awesome. And, and just keep going. We're going to try to open up two or three more cities. Got it. Are you maxed out right now? Uh, in Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, yeah. Okay. And are you able to grow per city? Is that why it takes time to grow? Like when it comes to doubling your team, uh, we we can double the team in our in the areas where we are, so we don't have to grow geographically. Okay. To, to double. Got it. Got no, it. No, what what has held us up is is just the process of uh, recruiting, staffing, training, managing, and we've deployed uh, a whole lot of systems right. to automate a lot of that. Awesome. So, so Good for you. It's going a lot smoother. Good for you. And so right now, um, the growth curve that you're on behind you, um, which curve are you on at the moment? Uh, we are easily in the rapid growth curve. Rapid, easily in the easily rapid growth. In the rapid. Effortlessly. It Effortlessly. just flows. Money yes. just comes, rains from the. <laughs> awesome. So you're you're in there. Is your goal to grow to exponential right now? Yes. Okay. I, I really think that our infrastructure will be set by the end of the year where we can do a double for 2020. Okay. Wow. Good for you. That's awesome. And so you're able to, so it will take a quarter or so in order to get that ready. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So this is very important because expectations and reality is are, are key. So a lot of people want to grow faster, but their actual reality of their business might not be able to handle it. And so even though you're on the growth rate you are, in order to get to exponential and double, you need the infrastructure. Yes. And I've spoken to many business owners so frustrated all the time of why they're not able to grow faster. And if it's a marketing problem, then you can isolate that, that we have inventory, we have assets, we have everything. Now we're not growing, that's a different problem. But in Glenn's case, he knows that right now it's just impossible to double. If he did, it would hurt the business. Yeah, we couldn't fulfill our obligations. Got it. And when you have that team, how do you plan on, um, let me just move this here to cash flow rates. And so if you look at those, how do you want to grow when you are in that state? Because basically you have a lot more responsibility of a double, double the size of the team uh, and you need enough volume in order to support that team. So from an advertising standpoint, how would you look at that? And from a business standpoint, how would you look at that? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay, so. But, but yeah. just to, to give, whenever we get a sale, you know, we say that, that sales were $13,000. Right. That we don't, they don't write us a check for $13,000. Okay. That's about what we make over the first year. Got it. It's, it's about $12,500. Got it. And uh, what are they paying based off of? Uh, they, we, we'd get 25% of their monthly billing. Got it. Plus, they pay us um, two times the monthly billing as a commission up front. Up front. Okay. Uh, so we get about 5x the billing that we get for them the, the first year. And then um, the, we, we average starting people about $2,500 a month. So that's where the 12.5 comes from. Got it. Interesting. Okay, so the reason I'm asking this question is because what happens is when you have a higher overhead, you need to be able to generate the revenue to support that, those expenses. And yes. so um, when that happens, you need to do usually more marketing. And so at that point, is there an ideal way that you're looking at the growth uh, of that business? Because you'll have double the team. 
I, no matter how big we get, yeah. <clears throat> cash flow is not going to be the problem. Okay. It's always going to be infra infrastructure. Infrastructure? Yeah, because we'll have to double the infrastructure again. Right. Right. And so this is an interesting situation, right? Because uh, you're not the only one who has this because every business has some sort of like physical human limitation, like team limitation. And I think the opportunity here is, and what we were talking about before, is just planning for quarters in advance uh, and preparing of what that would look like. Because just doubling your team isn't as simple as doubling your team. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot that goes in there. And then from the management and firing side too, of maintaining the quality of the team. And how many times do you have to keep doing that and maintaining that, and depending on how quickly you want to double or keep doubling. So yes. um, I think that is an interesting situation. Is, what is your like five-year-old, five-year like goal or, or the vision for the business? How frequently do you want to keep doubling or where do you want to take it? Uh, in uh, our, our three-year goal is to uh, have helped a thousand people become financially independent. In other got words, it. ditch their day job, they got their own business, and they're totally supported by their own business. So we want to have a thousand people do that. Got it. Which means that they've got to get their business up to the quarter million dollar a year range so that they can make enough money to live. Got it. And how many, these are people who are then successful, right? At yes. At 250. So do you have an idea of success rate right now? It's, approximately? Uh, there's, you can't really say a success rate because there's different stages. We've got right. like five different stages we work through. Success so rate. So we want to get people up to, to the fifth stage. So okay. A lot of people that are successful but are, but are stuck at stage two and three. Got it. So this is. Just to adjust this, this is success defined as you by you at fifth stage. Right. What is like the or or is third stage good enough? Do you, you know what I mean? Is that still a thousand? A uh, third stage in in our business is is where people are making really good money. Yeah. But they're still working in the business. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Where fifth stage they're man just managing their business. So this is actually third stage then. And how much revenue is that? They need to be at fifty thousand a month to maintain. I mean, their their gross billing has to be at around two hundred, at around fifty thousand dollars a month, and then they'll make. A they'll quarter, make. Yeah. Okay, so that is at fifth stage or third stage. That's fifth stage. Right, and at the third stage. At third stage, their their business is gro grossing probably twenty thousand dollars a month. Okay. Twenty k per month. And they'll have three or four cleaning teams working for right. them and they're very involved. Got it. The reason I'm asking this is because uh, I'm trying to figure out how many people do you need in the funnel and in the process that pay you in order to figure out how many of them will be successful third stage. And we don't really know uh, yeah. because when we, uh, right now our traffic's coming from Craigslist. Right. And I think that when we move to Facebook, we're, we're going to deal with a a higher income level, they're right. going to start at a higher level. Got it. I think so too, um, depending on how that goes and, and what numbers work for you. Um, when this is happening, I mean, is there a range you could put on that? Is that one in three? Is it one in five? That's because uh, you don't control their success, right? Like you can you can create the environment for them to. It's, to it's probably uh, uh, half the people make it to stage three. Okay and stay there for four or five years. And how far are you guys there now uh, to the 1,000 people? That's kind of our national goal. That's a new goal. We just set that one. OK. And um, are you, like, are you 10? We don't, have, we don't have anybody at stage five. Oh, but at, at three? At stage three, we've, we've got a, a, a dozen. Okay, that's fine. I like this goal. So this is this is why I'm going through this process, right? Because is this game winnable right now from mm -hmm. your perspective? Because now is 12, or say whatever. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter what the number is. It's around that, right? We've we've got about 60 crews, right, in Dallas. Okay. I don't know what the numbers are for Houston. Okay, it could be higher. I'm just using it as an example. So if that's the case. Um, if you look at three years from now, that's 36 months, mm -hmm. right? 
Yep, let me do that math. Um, 1,000 divided by 36, and so it's 27 onboardings per month. And that's not really uh, 27 per month that are successful at stage three. But if it's double, then that's actually 54 per month total. So it's actually not 27. So because you need this many people to actually get that, right? Mm -hmm. And so at 54, um, you're looking at 54 annual value, 54 times, um, say, 12,000. And so that's 648,000 in revenue per month. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And so how much money do you want to spend for $648,000 of annual revenue? That is what comes down to the growth rate and profitability of your growth. And right now, that seems like a gigantic goal. Not, not really. No? Okay. No. I, I, I've built another company that's up to a half million a month. Awesome. And oh, it, I'm, I'm talking these are new people coming in every month. Well... Piece of information here is, yeah. is we're, uh, we're we're launching a membership site right. that will teach people to go through the levels, but we're not getting the accounts for them. Okay, that would accelerate eventually the people who come up yeah. here for sure. But but what it also does is is, is if now we, we get a group of people, let, right. let's say in Kansas City, right, then it, and they're all having trouble getting work. Yeah. we can go open an office there. Put a couple salespeople in there, and 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 so we we can that that can like set up our contractor base for every city that we want to open. I think that's really smart to leverage and, and speed it up for sure. Um, I would look at the horizon on that, mm -hmm. right? Because that obviously when it comes to how many people actually come onto the business and how quickly this happens mm -hmm. is is dictated based off of that. Yeah. So a thousand people that we're getting into the membership site. We're telling them initially just go find somebody to subcontract from. Got it. We, okay, so we that run them through them. the curriculum. Got it. But we're not really making marketing fees off of them. Not for the third stage. Right. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that in terms of how you acquire, again, this one, if you look at the profitability, you're actually happy. If you look at that, you'll, you're actually happy at break even or profit a, a little bit. And if you combine that with the growth curve here, it's very easy to just, you know, have that back end growth rate be so much higher. Yes. Because I really like, it's like a self-liquidating offer, you know, from, from everything you're telling me. People come in, there might be a little bit of profit, but the whole purpose of that whole business model is to get people into the program that you actually make money. Yes. Awesome, good job. Give them a hand, please. <laughs> Let me that All right, cool. So. I wanted to bring Glenn up because he has done a really good job of some of the numbers and we've been talking on each of the break, each of the breaks and it's, there's a lot of foundation where he's ready to scale. It's just a matter of timing and it's a matter of the infrastructure like he's saying uh, and then when a lot of these pieces come together, you can see how quickly that growth comes because now the environment is, is ready for it. Okay, so. Um, before we wrap up, um, I wanted to ask, now is the time to ask about any questions you have about any of this stuff. We have objectives and decisions and growth curves and all that stuff. And so uh, before we wrap up, do we have any uh, questions right now? So I have one from our live chat. Um, Mark wanted to know, when you add numbers into the financialing model worksheet, do you do this per campaign um, in Facebook? or do you calculate from multiple campaigns at once? Yeah, so that's a good question. So um, we do it across the business. If there's a specific type of campaign we're doing, mm -hmm. we look at it as like prospecting campaigns versus retargeting campaigns. And so these are all numbers based off of the prospecting campaigns or it's the overall business. So it's just, it's, it's up to you. All of those are in there for as a sandbox for you to play with and you can create as many variations and versions of it as you like per funnel. That's it from our live chat. Do we have any from our studio audience? Cool. I know we've been going back and forth yeah. with everyone uh, through all the breaks with all the questions. Um, what I do want to wrap up with is when you're going through this, 
look at the uh, specific questions that are being asked. And when I'm going through different pieces of content, or if you're listening to this again, or if you're not a numbers person, like look at each different element step by step and look at what I'm asking versus what I'm really asking. So here's what I mean by that. If I say, what's your objective and you want to make, I want to make a bunch of money or I want to double my uh, school or whatever the thing is, it's like, that's great. But why do you want to do that? And then as you're doing that, what is actually going to move the needle? Because if you look at everything the way it's structured, I'm ignoring a lot of things and I'm doing that on purpose. And what I'm asking you to do is do the same. Ignore a lot of these numbers and focus on the stuff that actually matters. The, the, one of the biggest takeaways from all of this is focus. Look at all the focus that we have on just one thing at a time, then it's going deep enough for you to make those decisions. And then after that, feeling good about the process on designing games that you can win. Because this whole thing, then when you actually go into the Facebook ad stuff and do the technical button pressing, it will be a lot more fun, it will be a lot more easier, um, and you'll enjoy the process when you're doing it, so when you're making a lot more money, you feel good about yourself. So thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. incredible so much brain power in one room i think you guys are going to be able to take all of this home and do some really great things with it um, and with that said you are not done yet this is a 10-day execution cycle so that means you're going to take everything we talked about today plug it in and start making these campaigns work for you so with that said we have an incredible elite commons facebook group over the next couple days please post your questions there you'll be able to tag myself nahal will get your questions answered you'll get feedback from your peers and from us as well um, and just let us know your progress throughout this whole cycle every day fill us in on how it's looking um, and yeah just, just let us let us be your guides through this process um, we also have a excuse me, Q&A call this coming Thursday. So that's a great time for you to bring those questions. And like Nahal said, just push the needle a little bit further uh, with expert feedback from our subject, subject matter experts. So um, with that being said, thank you to everyone, new members and, and returning for being here with us today. Um, and to Nahal for sharing his expertise with us. And we will see you next time. Thanks again.